Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about making graphs in Stata. So I already talked in a previous video about the commands hist and scatter, and I said that I'd talk about graphs in more detail in a later video, so this is that later video. The first big resource which I think is useful when you're trying to make a graph is just the help file for the command two-way. Two-way is kind of a parent for a lot of different graphs. You can see all the different types of graphs here. It's this really long list. And of course, for any of these graphs, you can just click on it to get more detailed help for that particular type of graph. So for example, here we are uh, to graph a linear fit between a y variable and an x variable. So this is like if I regressed y on x and then plotted the regression line. This is the syntax for doing that, right? So I'll show you what this command looks like in practice. So I've brought in this data set auto.dta. It's a built-in data set in Stata. So I'm going to show you two-way L fit, and then I'm going to graph prices against miles per gallon. So this is going to just graph the regression line. You can see, look, it's a line. It's kind of boring without having any data superimposed on top of it. One of the nice things about two-way, though, is that you can actually superimpose two graphs on top of each other on the same set of axes. And the way that you do that is you say two-way at the start, and then you put each graph that you want in parentheses. So I'd like to have a scatter plot of the data superimposed with this. Scatter is also a graph which is listed under two-way. With scatter, you don't have to write two-way before you type scatter. It's an exception to the rule. But it is under two-way, so these are two graphs under two-way. If I put each graph in parentheses, they get graphed on the same axes. And you can see here, here's the regression line. And then here are all the data points. OK, so here we have them superimposed on the same axes. Of course, you can see from here that this data doesn't really look linear. It looks kind of curved. So you might consider changing this from a linear fit to maybe a quadratic fit. So if I wanted to do a regression of a fit of price on miles per gallon and miles per gallon squared, I can change this to Q fit, quadratic fit instead of L fit, linear fit. And here you see I have a nice curvy fit, which looks like it goes a little bit better with the data. OK. So two ways are really helpful place to find, uh, to find the graph that you want to make. I want to show you a tool which is moderately useful if you're making like one graph which you don't need to replicate later. Uh, you can use the graph editor tool. So I'm clicking on graph editor here. You can also access it through the drop down menus. Uh, so when I'm in here, I can, without typing a command in this data, I can instead just click on things and change. So for example, I can change the name of this axis, change the name of the axis to whatever I want, right? I could call this anything at all. Uh, so you have the option to change the legend, basically everything about the graph. You can change with the graph editor. The only problem is, like I say, you can't run the graph editor in a do file. And all of this stuff that you want to change can also be done with options on the graphs. Uh, so there's a set of options which are common to basically all two-way uh, graphs. And so if you look in through the help file, you'll see the options for things like naming the axes, setting the scale. You can get rid of this like sort of blue-green background, whatever color that is. Uh, OK. So that's the graph editor. Like I say, it has limited uses. But if you were just making a graph once, maybe you don't care that much that you can't replicate it and you can't be bothered to look up the commands. So we won't save the changes to that graph. Uh, OK. The next thing that I want to show you is a couple of other little commands which are helpful for just making sort of pretty pictures. So I'm going to do k density. K density is it's like a histogram. This is what's called a kernel density. Uh, I'm not going to get into the details of how this is done econometrically. Uh, but this makes something which looks kind of like a histogram but is smoothed out. Basically, what this does, kind of lo a loosey-goosey description of what this does is we say, take any value of miles per gallon. If there are some observations which are kind of nearby, then we're going to say, then 
it's more likely that you've got an observation here. And the closer the observations are, then the more we're going to weight them. Okay. So essentially what it does is it produces a smoothed out version of a histogram. Uh, it can look a little bit cleaner, uh, maybe looks a little cooler. So this is a nice one to have. Uh, so K density, and then similarly, a way to, uh, to produce a line of fit. If I wanted to do prices against miles per gallon, and I didn't want to impose a functional form, there's a command called lpoly, which does a procedure which is called local polynomial, which is what's called non-parametric econometrics. Uh, basically what this does is it gives you kind of a loosey-goosey fit which gets pulled around a lot by the data. And so this can be helpful for getting just some kind of rough sense of the relationship between your variables. So here you can see that from looking at this red line here that it looks a little bit curved like this. So maybe I'd want to have a line of fit which allows me to have some curvature. So that's the basic introduction to graphs. And I think uh, if you want to get to where you master graphs, I think it's important for you to just spend a lot of time looking through the options for these graphs, and that way you'll be able to make pictures which look like whatever you want them to in Stata.